Hi, I'm Samir Desai, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to rearrange a carbocation into the most stable product. The purpose of this lesson is to help understand why a discovery made in the late 1800s by Vladimir Markovnikov is relevant in predicting the product of an alkyl halide when added to an alkene. To understand how this lesson ties into Markovnikov's rule, let's take a moment to review the foundations. Addition reactions are the addition of two groups to an alkene or alkyne. Alkyl halides are a great example because this reaction comes up regularly throughout organic chemistry. When these two groups are added, they are added in two steps. The first step, called the ionization through electrophilic addition to a pi bond, is the addition of a hydrogen to one carbon in a double bond, creating a carbocation with a bromine ion. Now, it seems that the negative charged bromine will want to share its electrons to create a bond with the positively charged carbocation to produce a neutral and more stable molecule. But before this step happens, the carbocation needs to be in its most stable form before the bromine will be able to share its electrons. In the simple example shown, the carbocation is already in its most stable form, so bromine will add straight away. But in a moment, we'll see more complicated examples that may undergo some stabilization before the nucleophile adds. We'll see that this stabilization takes place during an intermediary step before the nucleophile adds. In this intermediary step, the atoms in the carbocation may shift between adjacent atoms to form a more stable carbocation. There are two types of rearrangements that allow the positive charge to be on the most substituted carbon. One is a hydride shift. This is a shift of hydrogen to the adjacent carbon. Two is an alkyl shift. An alkyl shift is a shift of CH3, or methyl, to the adjacent carbon. Let's take a look at some questions so we can use these concepts to rearrange a carbocation into its most stable formation. In A, we want to gauge the current stability of the carbocation. Carbocations are stabilized by neighboring carbons. We use the term primary, secondary, and tertiary to describe the number of carbons bonded to the carbon with a positive charge. And stability increases as the number of neighboring carbons increases. A is a primary carbocation because the carbon with a positive charge is attached to one carbon. An uncharged carbon with a full octet is very stable. A primary carbocation, like this, is unstable because it doesn't have that octet. In fact, this primary carbocation is the least stable type of carbocation because it only has one neighboring carbon. Carbons are known as electron donating groups, meaning they are able to donate some of the negative charge through the use of electrons to make the carbocation slightly less positive. What if we could move the positive charge from this carbon to this one? Now the positive charge is on a secondary carbon, which is much better equipped at stabilizing the charge. A negatively charged bromine would be happy to react with the secondary carbon. Well, there is a way to move the positive charge, through a hydride shift. The hydrogen on the carbon bonded to the carbocation will shift to this primary carbon. The hydride shift creates a full octet on this carbon, but now this carbon is lacking its octet and positively charged. The positive charge is now on a more stable carbon, so that's what a rearrangement looks like. Let's take a look at B. Here, the carbocation is bonded to two carbons, so we call this a secondary carbocation. This is certainly more stable than a primary carbocation. Is this the most stable carbocation, or can a rearrangement occur? A hydride or alkyl shift moves the charge over one carbon. If a shift were to occur, the positive charge would end up here, which is a less stable primary carbocation, so the molecule would never expend energy to get to a less stable state. Alternatively, a shift could come from a group attached to this carbon and would move the positive charge here. Again, this is still a secondary carbocation, no more stable than the first, and so we would not expect a shift in B. C is a tertiary carbocation. A carbocation does not get more stable than a tertiary carbocation. Any shifts would move the positive charge to one of these carbons, which would make the carbocation less stable. Therefore, no rearrangement occurs in C. Lastly, D is also a primary carbocation. We can expect a shift in this molecule. Now, we could have an alkyl shift resulting in this molecule. This secondary carbocation, due to the alkyl shift, is certainly more stable than the original primary carbocation. But is this the most stable rearrangement with one shift? No, a hydride shift can occur, resulting in the positive charge on a carbon bonded to three other carbons. Markovnikov addition, broken down into smaller steps, is much more digestible. In the next lesson, we'll piece these components together.